What is up, everyone? Welcome to the next part of the home entertainment setup series. I believe this is part three. Um, yeah, this is a shambles right now, absolute shambles. It's all dusty and all over the place and just really, really not the way we left it in the last video. Um, as you guys know, I've unboxed some new kit for this setup, but that's... I'm tripping over toys and everything here. Um, that's not what this first segment of the video is going to be about. This first segment is just going to be a little bit of TLC on the setup. We're going to clean up what's here already um, and make a couple of little changes to the LED system um, because the LED system was a complete fail. Um, it wasn't too bad on this speaker. As you guys know, I put LEDs down the back of each speaker. Um, it looked really, really good, but this one just would not stay on and I had people say oh, do hot glue and do this and do that but what I'm going to do now is stick the LEDs to the back of the TV which you can see I've done which is a bit more of a conventional thing to do then I'll run some cabling around the back and I'll stick some LEDs on the rear two speakers as well to brighten it up a bit so yeah this is all about sorting this out basically as you can see half the consoles are missing we've got a bit of an issue at the moment um, we have to move our consoles as you can see the GameCube and the PS2 are there the N64 is actually upstairs left over from when I made a video about those N64 bags um, but yeah we're just going to sort this out see what we can do tidy up this little bit of cabling because lots of that is to do with the LEDs and get back on track before we add any new equipment so as I go I'm just hoovering up a little bit of the dust that I find uh, the big clumps before I properly clean everything um, so that gets a lot of the the grime out of the way and something else that I've just remembered is I can actually get rid of all of these speaker cables um, now I'm keeping these Samsung speakers for those of you who haven't seen my unboxing I've bought an Onkyo receiver but for now I'll be keeping the Samsung uh, floor standing speakers and basically all of the Samsung speakers apart from the subwoofer um, but what I will be doing is replacing the cabling because not only are these really thin and nasty cables, but they have those weird plasticky connectors on the end. And if I want to try and sell all of the speakers with their cabling after I finally replace them, whenever that's going to be, it would be nice to include the real cables um, for proper integration if somebody has a system like that or whatever. Um, so I've bought some more of this cabling. I'll show you guys in a little bit. I'll show you all the stuff that I've bought. Um, I bought all of this stuff probably about two months ago now, maybe a month ago. Um, and it's just taken me so long to get around to wiring it all in. But yeah, let's just continue sorting out this little bit for now. So I've got one cable out from the rat's nest, which is good. And I should be able to get the center channel one out as well if I give it a little bit of a yank because I've untied them all. Maybe that's easier said than done. As you guys can see, pretty mental back here. But of course, there's no real point tidying up any of this right now. Uh, because a lot of the input output from the TV will move from the TV to the receiver. In fact, all of it will. Um, the TV is only going to have an optical cable and one HDMI cable going to it. The rest will be going through the receiver, finally. <laughs> a load of you guys will be so proud of me for finally doing that. But anyway, I'm just going to continue working on getting rid of some of this junk. So it's not perfect, but it's something. Um, Obviously, the connection for the other set will come out of this end. I should really invest in one of those little splitter boxes things. Um, those little four-way or whatever they are for these LED things. That would be quite good, but I think I can get away with doing it with all the equipment that I have already. Um, obviously, you won't see any of this when the TV is, is pushed back against the wall. And I'm not bothering to tidy it up because, as I say, all of this input-output is going to change. So that's something. Apart from, I was thinking, uh, apart from the GameCube, the GameCube will remain on SCART and then it'll just pass its audio to the receiver through uh, the Toslink cable because uh, there's no SCART in on the receiver, of course, and uh, I can't afford component cables for it. So, um, yeah, a little bit more tidying up back here and then we can push it back, I think. So that's the setup roughly pushed back against the wall, but what I'm going to do now is swap the sub for the new sub because it's a bit bigger so that I can see how far we can push it over this way to get it as central to the sofa as possible. You know it's really really cool having all this equipment on the setup. It's good fun. 
and uh, I get a lot of people asking me oh Tom you know when do you ever get the time to use all this stuff and it's not about using it all extremely extremely regularly or anything like that it's just like you've got it and if you fancy it you can use it and obviously the TV is used for everything we're heavily using this sound system at the moment and you know I've got my tapes and things um, but the only bad thing about it, uh, well not the only bad thing, but one of the most annoying things is the fact that you have to deal with the cable mess. Uh, every time you want to change something, the cable mess is crazy. But I've just battled my way through swapping over those two plugs, um, which is good. So I can now push this rack back in out of the way and um, that'll be, yeah, I can then put the sub in and see where we stand. It's no big deal because this setup stays pretty much the same, especially once I make the changes I'm going to make in this video. The setup will be staying pretty much identical, but um, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating. Well, a little bit of a change. Um, yeah, look at the size of that sub, folks. Blink and neck. It's really difficult to find a small active sub. Anyway, um, if I put it over there where the old sub was, it completely and utterly 150 million percent blocked the use of the gas meter, which is extremely inconveniently placed there. So I have now shifted this entire setup just to shade that way, which is actually a little better for centralization. And uh, I've put the sub there, which at the moment kind of looks as if it's sticking out like a sore thumb. And uh, God knows how it's going to sound there. Um, although saying that, it's a really powerful sub for this room anyway. So if it's a bit lacking there, I just crank it a bit more. Um, but yeah, generally, folks, I'm pretty pleased with that. Pretty pleased indeed. So I've reached a stage now where I've cleaned all behind. I haven't cleaned the TV and things yet. That's my next step now. And then tidy up all of the mess that I've made here. And I am then ready to, one day in the future... Uh, install the new receiver, Blu-ray player, and all that kind of thing. Um, the other cool thing is as well, even though I don't like putting stuff on top of subs for obvious reasons, it does give another surface if we need one. I am currently struggling to find a place for my N64, because as you guys know, it used to live on top of the Samsung unit in there, but um, the Blu-ray player will live on top of the receiver, which is a bad idea anyway, because it vents from the top, but it's only a tiny Blu-ray player, so it won't actually cover... It'll cover probably about 30% of the ventilation, which should be fine, considering I won't be pushing the amp that hard anymore anyway but I'll just keep a close eye on it um, but yeah could always put my N64 over there maybe at a push who knows but yeah um, looking pretty good I'm going to tidy up the rest give it a clean and see what I think then well there we have it folks relatively dust free and I've uh, given the screen a good clean um, it might need another go once it's completely dried but um, for the most part that is sort of back to normal now um, ready for the new stuff which is great and it's looking pretty good the only thing I haven't done is those glass doors but we may be taking those off anyway so what I'll do is I'll tidy this first and then we'll see if there's anything left to scrub up on the setup but I'm really really liking this I'm looking forward I was kind of dreading putting the new stuff on because it was such a job but now that I've got loads of um, loads of the cabling out the way and things I'm feeling pretty good about doing it so I've decided to give the glass a little bit of a wipe I'm not sure if we're taking it off or not uh, sometimes it causes a couple of accidents here and there including with me actually I find these quite annoying if they're left open and then accidentally walk into them um, but yeah, I couldn't find the glass cleaner, so I've given them a wipe with normal cleaner, and they haven't come out that great. So as soon as I can find where the heck the glass cleaner has gone, I'll give it a proper clean. But what I've done um, is carried down my new receiver. I'll insert the model number on the screen right now. I think it's the Onkyo NR709 something, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, this is a beast. If you haven't seen my unboxing video, go and check it out. Um, I'm basically going to put it in and try it out for size and also try it out with Eli to see what the heck he makes of it um, because yeah it's an expensive bit of kit and uh, it would be great if we could keep the glass doors on here to give it a little bit of protection this is a beast guys a real beast check that out there is no way I'm going to restrict the airflow to that thing by putting the blu-ray player on top of it 
So it's actually the same day and I've got some time to myself at home. So I thought what I would do is, uh, is start wiring up, at least make a, a start, because I don't have to do it all at the same time and then it'll be a smaller job. Um, so basically, I'll take you through what we have here in this pile. Firstly, we have the calibration mic for the sound system. Um, probably won't need that today. I'm not gonna get the rears done, I know that much. Next up, we have the remote for the Blu-ray player and the receiver. We have got, I believe, 50 meters. That's right, 50 meters of uh, nice speaker cable. I've got some banana plugs. I've got a subwoofer cable, HDMI cable to feed the TV, because of course I now need an extra HDMI cable because we're incorporating uh, an external Blu-ray player. And I've got the mains lead for the receiver and the mains lead for the subwoofer. Now the only thing that I am pretty much clueless about at the moment is where the heck am I going to stick the Blu-ray player? It's not going to live there guys, um, it looks stupid um, and it's not going to go on top of the receiver because it is going to kill the airflow. Or is it? Oh, I don't know. It's really, really tough to call. Do you know what, guys? I'm leaving the damn thing there for a moment. Who cares? It's just going to sit there for a little while. Um, I'm going to make a start. Hopefully, while I have the house to myself, I will get the centre channel wired up, the left and right, as well as the sub and the receiver uh, into power so we can test it out. Let's give it a go. So when it comes to banana plugs, I'm quite fussy. I really don't like it when there's any copper um, showing outside of the plug, if you know what I mean. So I like it to be sleeved all the way up until the tightening process. So what I do is I strip off double the length that I need, twist it, and then I fold the uh, the cable, the wire inside over the thread itself. So you get a really tight grip on the banana plugs then. And uh, yeah, I'm bananaing this setup because it's convenient. Um, this is the centre channel uh, wire, obviously, because it's really short. So, uh, yeah, that's one done. So that's the first bit of prep done. We've got a centre channel and two identical length left and right channels, which is fine for now, all good. Um, of course, the sub is active, so we don't need speaker cable for that. It is now time to connect the receiver and the sub to mains electricity, let's go. We've got mains going to the receiver and to the sub. We are now going to connect the subwoofer cable so that we can push the sub back into place and we do not have to touch it again. This is just an ordinary sub cable. Can't remember how much length I got. I think I got a decent length um, because I didn't know exactly where the sub was going to be on the setup. Do you know what, folks? I'm actually going through this a lot quicker than I thought I would, so that's very good. We should get a chance to boot the system up and give it a go. The thing that I'm not doing is rerouting all of the stuff through the receiver at the moment, just getting the receiver set up, sort of standalone. Okay, that's going to need sorting. So there we are with the centre, front and... Uh, sorry, center, right and left plugged in. We've got HDMI out to the TV, we've got power, we've got the subwoofer, and what I'll do is I've got a Toslink cable back there that's coming out of the TV. I'll plug that into the Toslink in to get some input into this thing for now when I put it back on the shelf because it's only a short one. So I'm gonna lift this up and uh, yeah, then we can crank it up and see what it does. So it's the next day and we've had an evening of using this system. Man, it's taking me a little while to get used to how, uh, where have I put the remote? There it is, how AV receivers work. Um, yeah, I'm still not fully confident with it, but I'm getting better. Um, I like the flexibility, I really do, but it's about wading through the features that I don't need in order to find the features that I do need. And once it's all set up, it'll be done. And also, once I've got all of my inputs through it, it'll be easier as well. Just to keep you guys updated, I've got the Wii U directly connected to the receiver for the moment and the receiver directly connected to the TV, both via HDMI. And I'm currently experimenting with a bit of music. I know it's only from YouTube, but it's all I've got at the moment. Um, I'm listening to some of the THX music modes here while I'm alone in the house. And also I'm going to try and wire up the rear two channels while I'm alone for this hour or two. And uh, yeah, there's the clock. And yeah. 
I'm just having a little experiment and unfortunately I've lost one of the cables that I want. Hopefully I can find that later. But yeah, I'm just gonna have a little listen and then we'll wire up some rear speakers. Well folks, I've just been having a little listen to some tracks from YouTube. Um, I will say that this sub has got some grunt. It really, really has. Um, there's some weird dead zoning going on in this room and I think it's the positioning of the sub. Um, oh man, it's, it's crazy. I can't really pinpoint where the dead zones are at the moment. Um, I'm really gonna have to do some further test. Well, obviously I can pinpoint where the dead zones are, but I can't really pinpoint a, pa pinpoint a pattern to them. That's what I mean. Um, so yes, indeed. Just gonna move all of this stuff out of the way for now so that we can get to uh, pulling out this furniture to wire up the back. That's the thing when you've got a little one, folks. Toys absolutely everywhere, but wouldn't have it any other way. He absolutely loves his toys. It's really nice to have a lot more headroom on the sub. Um, the old sub, um, the old setup was sounding better than what I've got this setup sounding like at the moment. But bearing in mind, folks, I've done zero tweaking. I've literally plugged them in and fired them up. And uh, taking the sub out of the equation for a minute because it's by far not the most problematic speaker on the setup. Because these are now getting more juice, they are really sort of, oh man, you can hear the speaker box, you can really, really hear it. Before they were being driven and they were just sort of tickled and, and they were ticking over just nice, but now they're being absolutely grunted by this amp. Um, you can really hear the plasticky uh, enclosure and the cardboard interior, it sounds like. You know, it's got that sound to it, that cheap speaker sound. But sometimes um, with a bit of EQ, you can really help that along. Sometimes there are one or two offending frequencies that you can eliminate. Uh, to make it sound a lot more pleasing to the ear. And I think that's the case with these speakers. Um, center, not so much, because, you know, dialogue sounds pretty good. For the size of the speaker, it sounds pretty good. Um, mainly left and right for music listening is it leaves a lot to be desired. But for films, we watched a film on this last night, and my word, yes, it was nice. Especially considering, as I say, no settings tweaked. The film was, was top-notch. Um... But let's pull it out and see what we've got going. So I've got my basic connections connected, apart from that Toslink cable, because it's so short, I have to plug that in when I put the receiver back in. That's just to get audio from the TV. So we have now got composite video and stereo audio coming from that heap there, which will be going into that SCART splitter. Reason I'm keeping that SCART splitter is because it's no bother at all. And um, that is all hardwired in now. So the two SCART connectors will patch into there, composite out into the receiver, and that'll be all good. Reason I'm using composite, as you can see, there is S-video available, but I'm using standard VHS and standard Beta Max, so there is no benefit of going S-video. So nice, thick, high-quality composite cable going over will be fine. We've got component there for the PS2. We've got Wii U, Xbox 360, Blu-ray player, output to the TV, and then speaker connections. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the moment. Obviously, the N64s are to go in, but that'll come later. Um, what I'm going to do now is power this up while it's outside the rack and check that I can patch everything in properly. Well, guys, just trying to troubleshoot my uh, Sony Blu-ray player for a second. It's um, outputting something weird. And if I connect it via composite, it's like, oh, you're using a HDMI output. You can't use this composite output. And it's like, I've disconnected the HDMI. You bloody idiot. Ah, the more complex AV setups get, the more difficult it is to configure, and I'm not even halfway there yet. And I've just had a phone call from Jess. She's on her way home, so I've got to put all this back tidy, because Eli's going to be running around. So uh, yeah, it looks like I managed to squeeze about six or seven minutes in today. I've got not much further. At least I've connected the Xbox to this, so that's something. Um, yeah, I'm going to get all this back tidy, and uh, hopefully find a, a time in which it's convenient to have a look at it again. Well guys, it is about a month later, maybe six weeks. Um, I'm so, so, so sorry for the delay. The main reason behind the delay is the fact that the next job on the list is running cabling around the back 
for the LEDs on the back speakers as well as a uh, signal to the back speakers themselves. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, Eli's in bed. He hasn't slept yet. He'll probably sleep for about an hour. So I've got about an hour to do this. Jess has just gone swimming. So I've finally, for the first time in weeks, um, been at home while uh, I've had the opportunity to do this, basically. So um, just a quick sort of recap. Um, or not a recap, I've just had to recap myself by watching the video that you guys have just seen or the part of the video that you guys have just seen. We've been using this system for ages now, of course, um, without rear, rear speakers. So I haven't calibrated it or anything, I haven't fiddled with anything in terms of settings. And uh, it's been performing surprisingly well considering. There are a few things that really annoy me about this setup compared to my old setup. Firstly, I think the subwoofer is fantastic, but something that really, really gets on my nerves is the fact that if you're watching any kind of content that doesn't have continual bass, something that's just got the odd bit of low end here and there, um, it kind of the sub kind of wakes up. I'm not talking about standby mode. That's a different thing altogether. It's on standby at the moment. But the sub sort of wakes up, and it makes a load of noise, like audible noise, um, sort of two maybe one and a half to two seconds after you've had a big bit of low end so to combat that i've turned the subwoofer itself down and turned the output of the sub up on the amplifier and that's kind of combated it a bit the other thing that annoys me about the sub is the fact that i do like the standby mode when it goes into standby after a certain amount of time when you're not using it however if you're watching content that is not very bass heavy and there's uh, a long scene without any bass, the sub will go to sleep completely, uh, even though it may have been outputting something. So I get annoyed at the fact that the sub sleeps even if it's outputting a tiny, tiny bit of bass, because as soon as the sub goes to sleep, the whole system sounds like junk, uh, because there is no low end in these Samsung speakers whatsoever. And that brings me on to my next point. Um, obviously, when it was the home theater in the box system, it was kind of tailor-made to be one thing, so it sounded great for what it was. Whereas now, I'm sort of bodging together a setup and um, there is a void in the lower mid-range or the sort of, the low end that is too sort of up the spectrum for the subwoofer, but too below the spectrum for the speakers. So there's a bit of a void in low end there, which is annoying because I know these speakers aren't capable of producing the frequencies that I want to hear. Uh, so I will soon enough when I get a bit more money in, I'll be investing in upgrading the speakers, starting with the center channel, followed by the front left, right, and then finally followed by the surrounds. But a new center channel, I've got my eye on a center channel that I want, and uh, I'll be purchasing that very soon, I think. But that's me pointing out downsides, um, sort of, you know, trying to think of downsides. Other than that, this system is killer. I'm really, really happy. The receiver is a beast. I love having all of my inputs going through it. It makes life so much easier, not faffing with inputs on the TV. Um, it's... Oh, it's just working out so well and I can't wait to get surround connected. So what I'm going to do, I've basically got all the stuff down here that I need. I've got the cabling for the LED system so that we can get LEDs on the rear speakers as well as the banana plugs and some speaker cable. Hopefully I've got enough of this left because I've been borrowing some length of this for some other projects as you may have seen on the channel. Um, but yeah, I'm really hoping that I can get this part of the video done today. I would love that. So first things first, I've got to get all of this stuff out of the way so that I can take a look at my loom of wiring going back there and uh, wire up these back speakers. So guys, here's the main sort of cable snake going back at the moment. It's basically um, two speaker wires going back to those wooden speakers and the two Samsung ones. So. The Samsung ones are the ones we're going to be taking out and we're going to be adding two fresh ones for the rear speakers as well as the power to the LEDs. Um, I've just given this lot a quick hoover under here and in that corner over there, just a really quick hoover and uh, taken all the junk out that was crammed down in that corner down there. Unbelievable. And uh, underneath this thing. So, oh man, just that, yeah, th that's already kind of like 
taken it all out of me, but hopefully I'll get inspired to continue um, as I start wiring things up. So I guess it's just a case of guessing some lengths for some um, rear speakers. And um, I'm glad I used Velcro now so that I can take all this off and then put it back without wasting cable ties. But yeah, just plodding along with this. There we are, guys. Old wiring is out. That is done. We're still making progress, guys. I'm just fitting the LED strips onto the back of the rear speakers, something that I've wanted to do since we moved in, uh, since part one of the video. So I'm glad I'm getting that done now. Um, so yeah, this one's on and it's cable tied on. It's not going anywhere. And also the cable is run, as you guys can see, back there so that will become part of the loom and there's plenty of excess so uh, length won't be a problem and I've got another cable to run to this one it's a shorter one to go behind the sofa so it's actually working out quite well awesome LEDs done that's one big thing out of the way next up we've got speaker cable that little guy there is the surround left connection it's awesome that I can pull this receiver out and still have enough cable length to um, pull it forward a bit and you know work on things. Um, that's one really cool thing. The cables may indeed be a massive mess behind there, but at least I can pull it out. Um, so yeah, that means we've got one cable left, and that is for that speaker over there. So I'm going to measure that out roughly, and. Uh, run it round and then I've got to tie back all of this but it's going okay I've got plenty of length on all the cables it's just I've got to make it neat so that's going to be difficult but let's plug it in first to make sure it all works oh guys I am so excited for the first ever time I can play my Wii U in proper surround sound check it out hey hey Those rear channels are working. Absolutely brilliant, sorted. Right, I'm gonna do a bit of a tidy up. This is all sorted, I'm very happy. So guys, that is it for this part of the video. I know I didn't go crazy in depth about the wiring and things, but at this point it's all pretty simple. It was just a little job that I was sort of dreading, but as you can see, I've put everything back and it's quite good because I've had a hoover underneath and things. So it's uh, quite a bit nicer now and it's all tidy and things. Um, so this is it for this part and I'd still have more to show you guys. So now that everything is installed or most things are installed, now that I've got the rear channel speakers plugged in, we can begin to calibrate and test the system and to uh, fiddle around with it and do some demos and things like that. So the next video will be primarily um, fiddling about with receiver settings and chatting about audio, in-depth talk about the sound, and we'll try out a load of different sources and get all the settings absolutely sorted. So it may be a little bit of a boring part for some people, but in that part, we'll also reconnect all of the equipment that is not on the setup right now. Uh, missing from the setup are my N64 and GameCube, as well as Jess's PS2 and the Japanese N64 isn't hooked up. So this system is all well and good for the new console stuff and the uh, Blu-ray player and everything like that. But as for the old retro systems, it's not currently set up properly. And also, I don't have a dedicated feed going to my secondary surround system because I was using the phono output of the TV. All of my sources would get sent to that rack as well. So I could use that for VHS and N64 um, because it sounds a lot more authentic. But um, I'm going to have to see if I can route the left and right phono output uh, of the amp. I'm going to have to see if I can route all the signal through. Um, I'm not really sure about that. I'm going to have to have a little look at the manual and things. I haven't really played around too in depth. And also the setup needs a really good clean. It needs a good dusting and stuff. So that's something that I'll do between now and the next video. The next video will probably be in the new year. I can't see me fiddling with all of the calibration and things this side of Christmas. Um, it'll almost definitely be something for next year. So for now, this is it for the entertainment setup series. I believe this is part three. Um, I'll probably see you guys in part four. And then there will also be a future part where we bring the projector into the setup because, of course, one of the main benefits to adding this receiver is the fact that I now have two HDMI outputs 
for all of my gear and uh, I can use the projector with every single type of video content that we watch apart from TV because obviously we've got the free view built into the TV but that's no big deal anyway so projector up there and a nice screen coming down in front of the TV will be awesome uh, but that's something way in the future definitely next year um, at some point but yeah rambling aside folks I hope you've all enjoyed this portion of the living room home entertainment setup we have gone from um, an all-in-one kit to a lovely dedicated receiver and over the next few months we'll see some speaker upgrades and things like that so hope you've enjoyed and as always I will see you all in the next video Music